Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky. Today we are doing a huge project. We are working on organizing our seeds and doing a big seed inventory. Tonight or tomorrow, I wanna to put a seed order in and how in the world do I know what to order if I don't even know what I have? They're not organized by type. They're not organized by cold weather versus warm weather. There is literally no organizational method to this. If I go to order seeds right now, it would be a really bad idea because I don't even know where we're starting. The reason I have not organized these in a super organized manner is because one, I just, I was being cheap and I didn't want to spend a few dollars that I, with a solution that I felt would be the best solution. The first year I had a big three inch three ring binder and I had these sheet protectors and I would put my seeds in these sheet protectors. But you can see when you have, say, you know, tomato seeds, I probably, I don't know, we'll count, we'll do an inventory, have 20 packets. You get a bunch of seeds in there, and when you have these in a three ring binder, it makes it very difficult to flip, and you can't see very easily what you have. And it just, it quickly became not functional for me. So then the next year, I took them out of that three ring binder, and I put them in these white tubs that I got they were a dollar, I got them at Goodwill. Because you can see that they're tapered, the seed packets did not fit all the way down very well into the bottom of these. Some of them did, like this one is kind of a small seed packet, it fit down to the bottom, but not everyone did. And I had cardboard dividing them, but that quickly just did not work very well for me. And the problem is I would take these tubs into the garden with me and I can show you right here where that became a big problem. I already told you guys what I have in here. The bottom half is compost and the top half is that soil that I purchased. Ooh. Oh no, this is not good. Not good at all. Oh my gosh. So water apparently got in here because I have a ton of sprouting seeds. Look at that. I don't know how this happened. Can you see in there all those sprouts? We're not gonna let these go to waste. I'm really glad that I'm doing this with you guys because the last thing I wanna do is pay for seeds and then completely destroy them because I let them go to waste. Bringing something that's open out into the garden with a bunch of seeds that you're not gonna be using puts you at high risk for getting them wet and ruining all the seeds that are in there. And that's what happened to me, you can see with that clip. I have hundreds of dollars worth of seeds right here. I need to be a good steward of this investment. And the way that I have it now is not being responsible with these seeds. This is not very expensive. What this is, I've seen this all over online for organizational seeds. I did not come up with this idea, but I think it's a brilliant idea. And for two years I've been putting it off. And this year I'm not gonna put it off any longer. This is a photo organizer. It has this big clear tub and then inside it, it has these individual packets or little plastic totes. And they are perfect size for a seed packet. Can you see that? That is gonna fit in there perfectly. There's 16 individual containers in here. I'm gonna link these down in the description box, so if you wanna check them out on Amazon, you can. They're not very expensive. They are worth, to me, the investment because they're gonna keep my seeds protected. I can take this out into the garden and just have this and not all my seeds out there and I can have them in a plastic container that's gonna keep them safe from water. I purchased two of them because the way that I'm gonna be organizing them is I'm gonna put my cool weather crops in one and my warm weather crops in another one. And that is gonna be another way that I can organize my seeds. Now, if you don't have as many seeds as I do, you could do cool weather crops, say, on one side and warm weather crops on the other side. The other thing we are gonna to do today is we are gonna use my label maker and we are gonna label them and we are gonna make this look really aesthetically pleasing and pretty because I find that when things are organized, I enjoy what I'm doing more. So I just spent an entire day two days ago organizing my kitchen. I've only been two days since I've done it and I can already tell that I'm enjoying being in my kitchen that much more because the drawers, cupboards are organized and functional. This is not functional. Hopefully this is gonna be functional and we are gonna enjoy gardening, seeding, and doing all the garden things a lot more. Friends, if you have a good system on how you organize your seeds, can you please share them in the comment section? 
so that we can all learn together. First off, the seats that I saved that aren't in seat packets, I'm putting in one area. The way I've decided to start doing this is just organizing seed types by seed type. So tomatoes with tomatoes, peppers with peppers, and I'm making a mental list slash inventory of what seeds I have and what seeds I need. I'm not writing things down. You'd all know that writing things down is not my strong suit, but I do have a pretty good memory and I have a mental list of what I need to go into order for this next coming garden season. I will link down in the description box all my favorite seed companies that I order online from. Doing this is definitely making me want to get out in the garden in the sunshine. It is so gross outside. Let me show you what it looks like out there. It is just a typical Pacific Northwest day. It's going to be like this for an entire week. So doing this is putting a little bit of joy in my life, making me feel like garden season is going to be here sooner than we think. I almost wish that I bought a third one separate just for flowers and maybe herbs. My goal is to plant a lot more flowers this coming year because the beauty of flowers just makes it more fun to be in the garden. And they're just as practical as fruits and vegetables because what it does is it draws in those pollinators, the bees and the bugs that pollinate your tomatoes and peppers and squash. So without those little pollinators, we would have no garden and the flowers just make me happy to look at. So gosh, what should I do? Should I go buy a third one for herbs and flowers or is that a little excessive? That might be a little excessive at this point. If I need to do that in the future, I certainly will. My, one of my goals last year was to purchase the item that makes the job more functional, the tool for the correct job. And this is just spilling over into this year because these are the correct tools, I believe, for the job. I have my label maker here. I'm going to just pick up one of my piles of seeds and I'm going to print off what it is. And we are going to start labeling these totes. If you have never used a label maker before, they waste a lot of the print material every time you print. So what I like to do is go through and type in as many as it'll let me and then I print all of them at once. So I'm not printing each individual one. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Let's see, should I do hot peppers and sweet peppers? I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll do hot peppers and sweet peppers. I'm definitely surprising myself what I'm finding while doing this inventory. I had one packet of beans, which is a not enough for Josh and I to get through an entire year. And some things I had way too many. I have three packets of celeriac and I've only ever gotten two celeriac to grow. So that is way too many. I do not need 600 and something seeds of celeriac. So last year I did not do this. I just ordered kind of based on a whim of what I thought looked good at the time when I was ordering. And that's why I ended up with five Cosmo packets. <laughs> we got everything labeled up. Now it's time to alphabetize them and put them in the bins. I don't know if you guys know, I used to be a dental hygienist, but before that I did front office in a dental office. And we, when I first started in dental was 2008 and we still did paper charts. So I had to file the paper chart. That was one of my jobs. And I did that for four and a half or five years. And I still have to count the ABCs in my head when I am alphabetizing. And I still probably, when I show you, will have one or two off. <laughs> it's never been my strong suit. A lot of C's in the cold section. We have carrots, cauliflower, celery, celery and cabbage. It's a lot. One thing I have done is I have printed off a planting schedule guide and I put it in a sheet protector. This guide is actually provided to me from my local nursery. Um, I can link this down if you're in the Portland area. I'm in zone 8B. And if you guys do not have a local nursery in your area that provides a printing guide for you, what I would highly recommend is you go to the Farmer's Almanac. They have a website where you can enter your zip code. I'll link that website down in the description box as well. 
and that will give you a planting guide and that planting guide is fantastic i have used that planting guide it talks about when you should start things inside versus when you should direct seed seeds outside or when you should transplant your seeds that you started inside or you bought from a local nursery and you can put them outside i am in zone 8b 8b refers to the hardiness zone how cold and how hot on average it gets in my area but that doesn't include climate like humidity overcast and things like that those are two different things hardiness zones and climates are two different things you could be like me in a hardiness zone that's 8b and we're very wet typically i know in texas a lot of texas is zone 8b but they get way more sun, way less rain, and their climate is different than our climate. So that's just something to note. So hardiness just refers to how cold or how hot on average you get in a particular area, but does not refer to the actual weather on a day-to-day -day basis that you get. So what I did is I put my planting guide in a sheet protector. I'm gonna stick this right on the inside. I am probably gonna be purchasing a third one to do my herbs and flowers because when I show you in here, I condensed a ton of them. And I think long-term, I'm gonna to want to have a separate one where I can list every individual herb and every individual flower that I have. But for now, I'm really happy with how this turned out. This is my cool weather crops bin, and this is my warm weather crops. We have bush beans, pole beans, corn, cucumbers, flowers, and I needed to have two because I have so many different flowers. I mean, I've got such different varieties of flowers in here. And then we come to herbs. And this has, I put M herbs for miscellaneous herbs. I have probably eight different varieties of basil. That's why I gave basil its own. But, you know, there's all different stuff in here. There's cumin, coriander, cilantro, mustard, dill, parsley, and a bunch of other ones. So, so it's going to need to have its own bin. I think onions probably should go in the cold weather one because I plant that in January. So that we might be moving. This is going to be the first thing we're going to plant this year. Hot peppers, sweet peppers, summer and winter squash, tomatillos, tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes and slicing tomatoes. And then in our cool weather one, we have carrots, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, beets, broccoli, lettuce, parsnips, peas, kale, radish, spinach, Swiss chard, miscellaneous, and that is another reason why I think I need another one because there's probably eight different varieties of things in here. Here are some seeds that were gifted to me and these are the onion seeds. This whole entire packet are onion seeds that I saved myself. I saved a ton of flowers, zinnia seeds and calendula and just a bunch of other things and I'm not sure exactly where they are right now so I'm gonna have to find them because if there's anything that you feel that I'm missing here, please leave it down in the comment section because I learn so much from you and I think overall this is going to be a huge benefit and way more functional and just streamlined and I'm super thrilled with how this turned out. But I know that there's always room for improvement and that I'm probably missing something. Don't forget, I am going to link these down along with all my favorite seed companies down in the description box. There's going to be all sorts of goodies down there where you can look at the Farmer's Almanac and their website and figure out what can be planted when and where in your area. And so don't forget to check out that description box because it's going to be loaded with a ton of good information. If you guys enjoyed this, if you felt like this was helpful, please share it to anyone that might need a storage solution just like I did. If you're new, please consider subscribing. We've got so many exciting things coming up. In the meantime, if you want to go watch a garden harvest video, I'll put one right here and I'll put a cooking video right down here so you can enjoy those. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope 2022 is starting off well for you and I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye guys.